the new world order. It may or may not seem hard to believe that there are people so sour in their own guts, so self-loathing, and so self-absorbed in their minds, that they have come to the conclusion they are the smartest person on earth, that the world revolves entirely around them, and that everyone else alive now deserves to die when a comet crashes into the earth. Nevertheless, there are people alive right now, so sour in their own guts, so self-loathing bodily and so self-absorbed mentally, that they had it etched into the Georgia Guidestones in five languages that the total human population on Earth needs to be reduced to around 100 million. Present estimates exceed 7 billion alive now. Tuxedo philanthropist Ted Turner has advocated this publicly, while billionaire Bill Gates has made substantial financial contributions to the World Health Organization, WHO, to sterilize women and to spread incurable infections in third world countries, mainly in Africa. It is no secret that even Apple Macintosh founder Steve Jobs benefited from stem cell surgery performed on him in China, where stem cells are inhumanely procured through forced abortion. The essential eugenics agenda of the richest elite alive now is not new, nor was it when Hitler wrote of it as the Aryan ideal of racial hygiene, later called ethnic cleansing, i.e. genocide, in Mein Kampf, during the Weimar Republic era of hyperinflation in Germany. The concept of purging the undesirables can be traced back to no sooner than the earliest Caesars of the Roman Empire. Prior to this time, prisoners of war were captured and made into slaves or killed. However, following the massive expansion of territories under the later Roman Republic, the earliest Caesars were, ubiquitously, driven totally power-mad. They invented the concept of an enemy of the state, who could also be a citizen of the state, and who, once labeled as such a terrorist, could be subject to random assassination. Ultimately, it doesn't matter whether you are being targeted for assassination due to your race, be it Semitic Palestinian or Black African, or due to your creed of beliefs, be it Muslim or Yiddish. The height of this hateful ideology is simply put, population reduction. If you believe the planet Earth is overpopulated with human beings, take the initiative and kill yourself. Nevertheless, the false premise of overpopulation causing pollution that contributes to global warming is an alarmist battle cry among the environmentalist scientists who benefit from government funding grants. Who are the New World Order? You are not in the New World Order if you are reading this. In point of factual process, if you are even aware that the New World Order exists, you are not in the New World Order. The New World Order does not call itself that, and the members of the most financially elite planning bodies do not call themselves nor their philosophy by that term. Oftentimes, the equally insulting slang nomen Illuminati is slung at these hyper-rich scum pigs. However, this is no less inappropriate than calling Obama my nigga, or my homie, if you're not George Bush, King Fod, or the Pope. It would probably come as only a small shock for any current presidential candidate who, once elected, would find out that they are in fact utterly powerless to disobey their real bosses in the New World Order. Romney is nothing if not a poster child for a New World Order wannabe, and Santorum, Bachman, Cain, and Gingrich are the same. Gingrich can at least say he attended Bohemian Grove, although in interviews he denies it even exists, saying instead only, some people have a very vivid imagination. When asked about it by independent journalist for We Are Change, Luke Rudowski, the people who are in the positions of the greatest authority over making policy choices for the movements of armies, the impositions of economic sanctions, 
the rerouting of food and energy supplies, etc., are a small cabal, truly speaking, a conspiracy, who are simply super rich and who mostly all know one another. They don't see themselves as bad people. They just see you and I and everyone else below their economic class as bad people. The fact of this is never so apparent as when a rich elitist is questioned about a crime for which they are complicit in commanding the order for. They run away, hide their face from the camera, and often insult or assault the journalist. They are completely consumed by their own self-loathing. To such an extent they insulate themselves entirely from all possible recrimination for their immoral choices. To say they are psychotic would not be exactly accurate. Technically, they could be diagnosed as sociopathic schizophrenics because, like sociopaths or malignant narcissists, they understand yet ignore the moral register of right and wrong. And because, like schizophrenics, they exist entirely insulated inside a realm of their own delusions with no contact to any outside world. The apparent difference in social status between a full-fledged criminal pimp, like Charles Manson, and a full-fledged legal pimp, like Dominique Strauss-Kahn, is negligible in historical hindsight. There is no doubt now, 2,000 years later, that Caesar Nero was himself the greatest enemy of the state of his era. 100 years from now, the fact that Bush knocked down the towers will be taught in elementary schools. As they say, you should choose to be on the right side of history. The old guard of the richest elites, the so-called 1% of the 1%, consist of a very small number of people alive right now, and they don't subscribe to any group hierarchy, but see each other as more or less equal in defending their wealth against the crisis of democracy. They are all completely psychotic and, in my personal opinion at least, should probably just be shot. Names of Groups As I say, the richest elites belong to multiple planning bodies and steering committees and do not even keep track of the names of all of them for themselves. As was revealed when Henry Kissinger denied knowing what the Bilderberg Group was, and when British Prime Minister Tony Blair admitted he perjured himself to the House of Commons when he had testified he had never attended the Bilderberg Group conferences. For this reason, it is expedient enough to list only a few of these planning bodies and steering committees, including both those publicly known as well as those attended privately and illegally in violation of the U.S. Logan Act against secret collusion between U.S. citizens and foreign diplomats and then to study the past and present member lists of these few groups in order to find the big fish amongst the school of minnows like Kissinger and Blair. Suffice it to say about all these groups that the more senior the member, the longer-term plans they are allowed to present for the group to adopt. For example, if you are a little fish like Tony Blair, you are a yes-man in the war on terror, and privy to little more intelligence on longer-term projects than daily briefings by your peers in the U.S. DOD and executive branch. If you are a little bit bigger fish, like Henry Kissinger, you may propose projects that would extend into the future to take the same amount of time to complete as you have already been a member. As far as the example of Kissinger goes, he is a rather long-term planner, slightly senior even to Shbignu Brzezinski, author of The Grand Chessboard, a veritable New World Order geopolitical Bible. Kissinger's plans for the gradual phasing out of Asian communism following Nixon's visit to Mao Zedong in China are considered epic in their scope by many in this class or field. But in truth, Kissinger's authority in the current hierarchy extends little beyond the tip of his own nose. Kissinger, a long-term Soviet spy who gained so much access into U.S. policymaking, during the Cold War that it essentially dissolved the Iron Curtain between Washington, D.C. and Moscow decades before the Berlin Wall technically fell, must still bow and scrape before John David Rockefeller Jr. or Jacob Rothschild, let alone before King Fod or the Pope. 
However, as I have also said, these rich old men are all very psychologically sick. Most of them have developed peculiar antisocial predilections due to their genetic interbreeding and their social isolationism. It means nothing for someone of Kissinger's status in this field to order the napalm carpet bombing of Cambodia, or for someone such as George Herbert Walker Bush to order the economic sanctions on Iraq leading to the deaths of over 10,000 Iraqi children, paying, as former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright has put it, a price we were willing to pay. Thus, with that caveat, here is a short list of some of the most nefarious, well-known, and lesser-known groups comprising the rich elite's New World Order. The Trilateral Commission. The Council on Foreign Relations. The Federal Reserve. The Pentagon and DOD. The Intelligence Community Agencies. The Holy See and Vatican II Council. The UN the EU, NATO, the Bilderberg Group, the Bohemian Grove Camp, FEMA, NORAD, the IMF and World Bank, the Coalition of the Willing Member Nations, the DHS and TSA, the Communist Party of China, Skull and Bones, the Supreme Court and past presidents of the USA, the NYPD. As I have said also, everywhere you find anyone belonging to more than one of these groups, you will have found someone who has seniority to anyone belonging to only one within the hierarchy of elders, comprising the unofficial, de facto, New World Order. Names of Individuals One conspiracy researcher, Fritz Sprigmeier, whose work on mind control methods is second only to Joseph Mengele, inventor of the field, has proposed the theory that there are 13 families who own the world's wealth and control all the policy choices made by elected officials. This is a feasible theory, considering the concentration of wealth into the hands of a shrinking elite few. However, the concept of wealth being held by only a very few capitalist monarchs, so to speak, has been proliferated upon by subsequent researchers, such as David Icke and Jim Mars, to elaborate on inbreeding between these families over thousands of years to account for their rare genetic traits, such as the common blue blood ailment of thin bloodedness or anemia, or the once held distinct Habsburg nose, etc. The concept that a small number of families control the vast majority of the world's riches should not be mistaken in the circles of the New World Order for a system of hereditary titulary alike a national monarchy. One family can become rich in the same amount of time another can become poor and only certain offices, such as the President, the Pope, or CEO, persist. The people who hold these offices, the Presidents, Popes, and CEOs themselves, do not. I will not disavow Sprigmeier's concept of 13 ruling families of the richest elite, although I refuse to adopt the extension of this theory proposed by Ike and Mars and their ilk that the same 13 ruling families are the same bloodlines of the original ruling elite in Babylon. That seems, to me at least personally, making a mountain out of a molehill. On the one hand, we could easily disempower the rich elite by simply redefining the human concept of what constitutes wealth, as apart from their fiat corporate empires. On the other hand, it only empowers the already rich elite needlessly more so to imagine them being descended from the original Babylonian emperors. In short, even if it is true, it's irrelevant in formulating a strategy toward disenfranchising them. The method to destroy the New World Order is the same either way. Create a new form of economy that excludes them personally. 
for the purposes of excluding some of these people personally from the new economic order. I will give the names of only a few of the most notorious criminals alive right now who, nevertheless, have thus far avoided prosecution for their war crimes and war profiteering. And don't get me wrong here, either. Just because I might say George Bush Sr. and Jr., it doesn't necessarily mean Jr.'s daughters Jenna and Barbara, nor if I say Bill and Hillary Clinton, it should not be taken to extend to their daughter Chelsea, either. The sins of the fathers are only visited onto the heads of their sons if the offspring choose that course. At any time, any of these people may choose to repent of their corrupt ways and change the whole world. But I digress. Here are some names. John David Rockefeller, Jr. Jacob Rothschild. Henry Kissinger. Henry Kravis. George Bush Sr. and Jr. Bill and Hillary Clinton. Barack Hussein Obama. Pope Benedict XVI. King Fahd of the House of Saud. Dick Cheney. Joe Biden. Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin Bernanke. Dominique Strauss-Kahn. Ted Turner. Bill Gates, George Soros, James Baker, Christine Lagarde, Kofi Annan, Silvio Berlusconi, Vladimir Putin, Tony Blair, Tony Hayward, Michael Bloomberg, Rupert Murdoch, Joseph Lieberman, etc., the Agenda of the New World Order The agenda of the New World Order is simple and, as I have said, reinforced by their psychotic insulation from reality. They want to protect their personal property, which in itself is noble and moral enough. Only they believe, wrongly, however reinforced by their psychosocial insulation from reality, that their personal property extends to include all the natural and labor resources of the entire planet Earth. That is insanity, to say, I own Earth, but if you asked any of the above shortlisted names I mentioned for their resume, that would be their chief qualification, even if only for a job flipping burgers these petty tyrant Napoleon complex type A personality tin pot chicken hawk armchair hypocrites are a dime a dozen among the upper middle class of the USA. However, what distinguishes a prestigious megalomaniac war criminal like George Bush or Henry Kissinger from the average upper middle class American citizen is about a $100 million bank account and a collection of at least 100,000 dead souls on their conscience that they were directly responsible for murdering. Yet even the names of the richest pigs in our present society will fade out drifting away on the winds of history like the lyrics of a popular song. Their contributions to the forwarding of the long-term agenda of the New World Order globalists will be recalled as irrelevant by a decade from now. Their personal property will be ours again. We will inherit their earth because they will die of old age. Micromanaging the global economy comes down to one man's job in this system. The chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank is largely responsible for setting the policies applied to the U.S. economy, in part due to U.S. policy choices and in part in reaction to other global economic indicators and it is, ultimately, the Fed's policies influencing the U.S. economy that determine the day-to-day -day fates of all other world currency markets because they are all tied to the U.S. dollar, the so-called Federal Reserve note, as the world reserve currency. The former chairman of the Federal Reserve was Alan Greenspan, whose mentor was Ayn Rand, author of Atlas Shrugged, 
a book encouraging the so-called owners of the means of production, to go on a collective strike and self-destruct the system of industrialist capitalism from within. Greenspan, as Fed chairman, oversaw the collapse of the U.S. dollar's value during the Fed-induced mortgage bubble and consequent big bank bailout, endorsed pre-election in 2008 by both the Republican presidential candidate John McCain and the Democrat candidate Barack Obama. Ultimately, Greenspan blamed it on free market capitalism, claiming he was wrong in thinking that banking institutions would act in their own best interest to regulate themselves. The direct result of Greenspan's disastrous policies, continued by the present Fed Chair Ben Bernanke with quantitative easing, or QE, long held to be the first step of hyperinflation, is the Occupy Wall Street movement comprised of literally millions of newly homeless U.S. citizens who have taken to mass demonstrations camping in tents in public parks in major cities across the USA. The demands of the occupiers in this movement are few, but their placement of blame for their present situation squarely on the doorstep of the big Wall Street investment banking firms is obvious. Few solutions, such as the proposed Soros tax on the rich, seem capable of appeasing the insatiable appetite for justice of this brutally abused and ignored population statistic. Each occupier has their own beliefs, and unlike the Tea Party movement, they collectively have absolutely no loyalty to any single ideology, even if it is against something, such as the radicals in the Tea Party opposing unconstitutional direct taxation without representation. There is no hope in blaming Wall Street for the present mess if you do not have any better method than them for cleaning up the mess they created. The Globalist Map and the Geopolitical Terrain The rich elite of the New World Order would very much like us to believe that they are in total control of everything. However, the presence of a given number of free radicals, although allowed for within the scope of their plans, has begun increasing at a more rapid rate than their plans have time to adapt for. In other words, the dam has sprung too many leaks to keep them all plugged. The elite, who have practiced peculiar voodoo death rituals at Skull and Bones for the last five generations or so, and who are largely students of occult teachers such as Aleister Crowley and Anton LaVey, would very much like to feign surprise at this event. However, they should not be surprised, and if they are, it is surely an ominous omen for them. The presence of free radicals in the socio-political system today include Ron Paul, Julian Assange, and Bradley Manning of WikiLeaks, the anonymous movement of anarchistic hackers, the citizen journalists of We Are Change and Infowars, the Tea Party and Occupy movements, as well as countless thousands of internet-savvy revolutionary organizers in the nations of the Middle East and North Africa, and the thousands of Greek austerity protesters, not to mention the massive tens of thousands at least turn out to the ongoing protests in Montreal, Quebec, French Canada. There are already too numerously many organizations to represent all in a single list. Nowadays, anyone who info jams on a cell phone camera live streaming to the internet is profiled by the NSA and NYPD as a potential cyber terrorist. Still, old school Fox News editorialist pundits Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly try to place all the blame for the present situation on one person, who just happens to be a different person each time they broadcast, but who is never, in reality, one of the people who are actually to blame. Even CNN and MSNBC have joined Fox's strategy of blind praise for the incumbent administration and blind hate speech directed at the incumbent administration's opposition. 
Cable TV news networks are playing fiddle on the deck of the Titanic. Wolf Blitzer, John King, and Anderson Cooper are no less complicit in Obama's war crimes than have been Beck and O'Reilly since Bush Jr.'s administration's era's war crimes, and in turn all are nothing but the modern equivalent of Joseph Goebbels. As mentioned earlier, the MSM, mainstream media mainly consisting now of cable TV news networks, has already become irrelevant besides the direct media of the Internet. The new role for the New World Order and its rich elite is as irrelevant in the global reality they themselves have wrought. Dominique Strauss-Kahn recently tried for a second time on the charge of international prostitute racketeering, i.e. for being a pimp, this time in Paris, following a first arrest in New York City, and the current scandal where, while escorting U.S. President Obama while he visited Brazil's president, several Secret Service agents were found hiring prostitutes, and the ongoing hushing up of findings that 5,200 Pentagon employees were found who viewed child pornography. I am not even making that number up. These are all only the tip of a very large, very dark, and very ominous iceberg called, in short, the Finders. Once the child sex slave ring run by members of Mossad, ISI, MI6, and the U.S. CIA is broken, the names of every single criminal in every single office of authority in every nation everywhere around the whole earth will be exposed in their proper criminal context. The entire New World Order House of Cards will fall to the leveling wind of their sex crimes. In the end, we, the people, will simply go insane from the same effect brought about by the solar flare cycle's peak this year, as has caused the destabilization of the New World Order thus far, and, as brain-dead cannibal zombies, we, the people, will eat the rich. The Moral Compass of the Older Members the New World Order have failed to foresee the inevitability of not only their own irrelevance, but their imminent doom and downfall as well. They will be, are now being, and will soon be completely infiltrated by betrayal after betrayal from within. They are, after all, just human beings, thrust as they would prefer to see it by fate, into the unwanted circumstance of having to plan the world's future. It is not their fault their predecessors failed to warn them their system was bound to collapse during their tenor, due to the mistakes made by previous holders of their offices. Nor is it even their fault that these offices they hold, as irrelevant and megalomania-inducing as they are, even exist now in the first place. They, as human beings, do not feel like they deserve to be hung for the treasonous actions committed by their predecessors. When the long black limos with the thick black tinted windows speed through red lights leaving the Westfield Virginia Marriott Hotel parking lot after attending the 2012 Bilderberg Group meeting, and when Ben Bernanke or Norman Panetta or Henry Geithner or Hillary Clinton are called to testify before Congress in hearings open to the press, these rich elite, as human beings, feel naked shame, self-loathing, and self-disgust. But they overcome this shortcoming, just as one must overcome a shortcoming such as shyness, by externalizing rather than internalizing, and by projecting outward the outcomes we would most like to see happen. Instead of breaking down into tears of shame and confessing their guilt to the mass public, these figureheads of the true-to-the-letter conspiracy of rich elites instead broadcast their own self-loathing onto someone else. Blaming one's enemy for one's own worst crimes is the most common tactic for hiding in plain sight employed in the arsenal of these slimy little snakes in the grass. They cling on solely for the sake of a social status that is recognized only by a shrinking group of increasingly self-loathing and unpleasant people. 
They are led along like lepers to the loot of anyone innovative willing to scab for their agenda. Mark Zuckerberg, creator of the now wholly NSA-operated website Facebook, sold his franchise to their spies to have a movie made about him. I can't make stuff like that up. It's too real. The oldest and thus highest ranking rich elites in this globalist cabal, such as John David Rockefeller Jr., Jacob Rothschild, Henry Kissinger, George Bush Sr., etc., are absolutely unprepared to face the future beyond the pale, their own personal Siberian tundra, a wasteland where they no longer possess any property and have no social relevance whatsoever, no self-assumed responsibilities, and no one to look after them. In the end of their era, the rich will be ripped into by the poor who, seeking to devour them, will arrive only too late to discover the rich have already eaten themselves. Of course, all of this is meant to be a bit colorfully elaborate, a bit roseate and technicolor, a bit off-color, a bit of dark humor to make light of our present global economic depression. However, in truth, it is undeniably to everyone what they deserve. The rich elites are like the lame babes of Sparta, taken out and left to die in the wilderness. They simply have no place in a society where there is not an unlimited supply of fiat credit-backed currency. Without the Federal Reserve, and without the IMF and the ineffectual UN, and without their elder planning body and steering committee leaders, the entire New World Order plot to continue to control the global geopolitical chessboard to their own benefit will collapse into total anarchy. This has, of course, been the plot of the New World Order for centuries. However, the present rich elite seem to not want to uphold their end of the bargain and part with their personal property. Their inability to adapt to alternative ideas. The rich elites must consume and feed on the same food and chemicals as the rest of us. However, due to their age and the rate at which their chemical pollution has begun to adversely impact the entire global environment, and to contaminate all water and food supplies, as well as due to their seeding the foods market with genetically modified organisms, GMOs, via their genome patenting megacorporation Monsanto, the eldest rich elites will not long survive this world. It has been pointed out by many researchers from serious scientists like Ray Kurzweil to kook journalists like Alex Jones that the quest for life extension and ultimately the chalice of immortality has long gone hand in hand down the primrose path paved with good intentions, with racism and eugenics. This coupling of a selfish desire to prolong their own lifetime with the psychosis of believing themselves to be a superior race of human beings has earned the rich elite such well-deserved criticisms as being reptilians, as worshipping Moloch, as practicing ritual human sacrifice, as being closet rapists, as homosexual pedophiles, and even as vampiric cannibals. I say again, all of these accusations are well deserved because whether or not they have committed these forms of atrocities themselves, they have directly contributed to the insanity of our present global socio-political and economic crisis, creating a condition where all these atrocities are permitted to occur. The crime of war itself is rarely blamed on this small cadre of rich elite in the MSM, because the MSM are owned by the rich elite. However, outside the inner circles of greatest personal power on this planet, the so-called 99% of OWS are the wolf huffing and puffing at the door. In the citizen journalist and internet-based direct news media, the blame for the deaths of every soldier on all sides in all the wars of the past century rest on the heads of the rich elite running the planet's new world order geopolitical system now. As I say, the older the rich elitist, 
the less likely they are to want to stray from their seniority's plots for the long-term management of foreign nations. Because seniority in this rich elite determines rank, and because the older members are the most dead set in their own doomsday plan, the entire New World Order system is doomed to fail and is perpetually precariously poised on the precipice of complete breakdown at all times. To hear CNBC commentator Jim Cramer tell it, everything is more or less snafu, with nothing out of the ordinary to see here. But others, such as economist Peter Schiff and trends watcher Gerald Salente, are predicting the same imminent doom and collapse of the global dollar-backed economy as implied by the advertisements for gold investors that air during all the commercial breaks on the mainstream media. Now, there can be a counter-argument made, which is raised only by an extreme minority of admittedly very imperfect researchers at this time. The main researcher is Webster Tarpley, who has covered the Bilderberg meetings for over a decade, and who is as often accurate as Gerald Salente in his doom and gloom predictions of socio-political trends such as the current get money out of politics meme. Tarpley is adamantly opposed to Ron Paul, in particular, as being the right-hand man for Mitt Romney, whom Tarpley considers to be a shoe-in for the Republican nomination. And, again, only as implied by Tarpley's reasoning, guaranteed to lose against Democrat incumbent Obama. Tarpley refers to Paul's hatred for the poor as a form of hypothetical genocide and accuses Paul of closet racism and open nepotism in his hiring practices. These are all blanket charges with threadbare evidence to support them, and none hold water. However, the weakness of Tarpley's argument should not entirely discredit the, however small, side of the argument that sees Dr. Paul as part of the system, and therefore as a puppet in the plans of the people who plot out the most long-term schemes of the New World Order. Dr. Paul, Peter Schiff, Gerald Salente, and Webster Tarpley all share in common with AM radio and internet broadcast InfoWars host Alex Jones a general forecast of doom and gloom for the overall path the leaders of the free world are taking us all down. Compared, however, to the apparently retarded optimism of such vapid figureheads as Christine Lagrande of the IMF, Ban Ki-moon of the UN, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton of the U.S. Federal DOD, and Ben Bernanke of the U.S. Federal Reserve. These fringe-thinking radicals who predict doom and gloom look like Albert Einstein and Nikola Tesla's moon children. Their violent silencing of internal dissent. The policy choice to cover up the truth about 9-11 in the official report of the investigation committee was not made by any seated elected official at the time. It was decided even before 9-11 was carried out by past presidents and former heads of the CIA such as Richard Helms, George Bush Sr., Dick Cheney, etc. The cover-up of the truth about 9-11 has persisted now for a decade since the morning the event itself happened. There is no truth about 9-11 possible to be known. We, the people of the USA, are gradually coming to accept this. It is no great mystery. The conspiracy did it, regardless of how you slice it or who you blame. Directly or indirectly, it comes back to the seated administration of the federal government of the USA at that time, e.g. the George Bush Jr. administration of neocons, including Karl Rove, Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, John Ashcroft, Colin Powell, Donald Rumsfeld, and Ari Fleischer. These people are criminals for doing 9-11 and deserve to be hung. 
Rove authored a paper for the Project for a New American Century think tank entitled Constant Conflict, calling for a staged new Pearl Harbor to awaken the average American citizen to the very real threat we face in the 21st century from terrorism. Carl Rove is now a Fox News network anchor and appears frequently on the Bill O'Reilly show. He belongs in a cage like the enemy combatants being held without charge in Gitmo's Camp X-Ray. Not only is the suppression of the truth the sole goal and role of the MSM on TV today, literally right this second, but it has become a matter of military authority as falling under the generalized auspices of the blanket charge of terrorism to tell the truth. For example, a certain private first-class PFC named Bradley Manning leaked footage released online by WikiLeaks called Collateral Murder, showing the clear-cut video evidence of U.S. soldiers in Iraq accidentally killing an Iraqi journalist from a helicopter because they mistook his camera for a weapon. For this security breach, PFC Bradley Manning has been imprisoned in Camp X-Ray in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, along with the other POW enemy combatants in the illegal War on Terror for over 500 days straight, kept in solitary confinement much of that time and subjected to the same treatment as the other prisoners, including the admitted practice of waterboarding. However, the current show trials in the Kangaroo Court of Ad Hoc Military Tribunals established to try the Gitmo detainee POWs in the War on Terror and PFC Manning are only a run-up to the U.S. petitioning Australia to extradite Julian Assange, the other half of WikiLeaks, to whom Manning leaked his video originally. Assange, accused but not officially charged of sex crimes in Sweden, has been held under illegal house arrest in Australia for the same amount of time Manning has been in Gitmo. It is an open secret that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, in her recent visit to Sweden, had on the agenda the extradition of Julian Assange to the USA for a military tribunal-style kangaroo court drama. Such saber-rattling by these petty tyrants of first-world superpower nations is obviously, so pathetically beneath where we should be as a species by now, it's not even worthy of a troll joke in a YouTube comments section.